what you're seeing here is a garden that's in transition. All summer long, it's been the purple vegetable garden here in the Oklahoma Gardening Studio. And now we're switching over some of our theme gardens, changing our themes for next year. And this, at once at one time, was a vegetable garden. is going to switch over to being our year-round cut flower garden. So as we pull things out, such as tomatoes and those that have been damaged by the cold, we'll be replacing in with some woody ornamentals and later some flowers. I want to go over some of the woody plants that OSU recommends for use in cut flower use for bouquets and so forth. And some of these you might not have even thought of using in a cut flower bouquet. And this one, of course, is Foster's Holly. And Foster's Holly is um, a shrub that's going to be a very upright holly, very deep green foliage, wonderful red berries that really are not showing the full extent of their bright red color just yet. And as we go through these, I want to emphasize that although we have them in rows to teach people how to use them in cut flower production, you'd certainly want to work them into your landscape in some fashion. Another plant here is called the chokeberry, and it's grown, again, for its bright red berries. Those can be used in winter arrangements for seasonal color and interest. Another tree we have here is a crab apple. This variety is called snow. And all of these are going to get really big, but we just plan to have them in here as a nursery row just for one year to teach people about their uses for cut flowers. And the snow crab apple is going to get very large. Keep in mind that there are some crab apples that have quite a few disease problems. So if you plant one of these, make sure that you put it out in a wide open area that has good air movement to avoid disease problems. Then we have a Starking Delicious Plum. This is another one whose branches we'll be cutting to force the buds out and have some, some winter flower color later this spring. Again, Starking Plum is going to get very large. Plant it also in a wide open area. And keep in mind that it is in the same family as peaches, and it's going to need a little bit lighter soil. So plant it in a, on a more upland site on your property so you don't suffer from root rot. Back over here is one of my favorites, and that's the corkscrew willow. Corkscrew willow can be rooted in an old milk jug. It's so easy to propagate. You can just clip off one of these branches in the early summer, stick that in a jug of water, in a few weeks you have roots, and you have the beginnings of a new tree. Well, this is highly prized by people who do arrangements of flowers. They love that contorted habitat or habit, and it's very, very easy to grow. Then back here, we have Warren's Red Possum Haw or Deciduous Holly. Now, Deciduous Holly is the one that if you drive down the highway in eastern and southeastern Oklahoma, you'll see their blazing red to orange berries in the winter. Warren's Red is a selection that has deep red color. And again, it's just now coming on for us. Warren's Red also has very deep green foliage, very healthy plant. And I think it'll be a good one for cut flower use. Down here we have a barberry, and this is a form that has a red marbled appearance. And even though it is stickery, if just a few of those branches are cut and used in arrangements, it gives great interest in the wintertime. Then this is burning bush euonymus, and that's a mainstay of a lot of commercial landscapes these days because it is drought tolerant, it gives interest the year round. It can be pruned to different forms, either trunked up or grown just as a shrub, and it's very pest free. So that's one that you may want to consider. And check out that great fall color. We don't often see things that are that bright red in Oklahoma. So think about growing Euonymus alata. Right here is red twig dogwood. Now you're probably used to thinking of dogwood as a woodland tree that grows out um, under as an understory that we grow for the flowers in spring. But red twig dogwood, or red osier dogwood, is grown for these red stems. In fact, it also has another use. People who are involved in stream bank stabilization that want to stabilize the, the edge of a stream to keep it from eroding any further, up in the northern states, they'll take willow branches, and they'll take red osier dogwood branches and stick them in, root them, and they'll help hold the site. Because look at the form of this. It gets very shrubby. And it's going to get pretty good size as well, but we're going to grow it for those red stems. On over here, we have a good one for spring forcing. It's one of the easiest ones to force, and that's forsythia. And that's usually a, a good herald of spring forest here. This particular form is going to be a, a bright yellow, and I think that'll look good in some spring arrangements. We have a couple of broken branches, and when you're buying things in the nursery in the fall, keep in mind that they might have had 
may have a little bit of shop wear on them, but they're usually of very good value, and this is an outstanding time to plant these. Right here, we have a rosea variety of pussy willow, and normally pussy willow is sort of a silvery. This is going to be sort of a light pink silvery gray when we harvest these stems later in the winter. Then right here, we have one called sparkleberry. And I'm not real familiar with sparkleberry. It does have bright red fall foliage, so we're going to keep an eye on that as it develops here in our cut flower garden. Then good old nandina. And this is the medium form of nandina. It's going to get about four feet tall. And nandina, when it's not in a container and well established in the ground and, and growing vigorously, it's going to have deep green foliage and bright red berries. And this is excellent for filling in in arrangements where you want a ferny type texture. Now over here, we have calicarpa, and we showed you that a couple of weeks ago on Oklahoma Gardening. This is the perfusion variety, and although calicarpa prefers to be in semi-shade, we're going to try it out here and see how it does with the others because it is a great cut flower plant. Then we have budlia, and we have four colors of that. We have a medium purple, we have a pink variety, then right down here we have a more violet purple, and back here we have a white. And those have really been attracting butterflies the past couple of days in the Oklahoma Gardening Studio. And again, they're outstanding for cut flower designs. Then right here is one that you may not have seen before. Some people call this Harry Lauder's walking stick. And it is actually a form of filbert or hazelnuts. If you buy mixed nuts in the fall, the little filberts are the smaller ones, usually in a nut mix. Well, this is a selection that is very contorted, similar to the corkscrew willow. And it is, again, highly prized for arrangements that have a very stark, contorted look to them. One thing I want to mention about this is it has suckered out with a straight form of hazelnut. We want to cut that away so that the contorted form continues to grow because this will overshadow it and could overgrow it completely. So we're going to prune that out. And when you buy nursery stock, don't be afraid to prune on it and, and sort of design it to your needs. Another thing you want to be careful about is looking at the root ball. Now this is, a, by all looks, a container-grown plant, but it actually it was field-grown bald and burlap and then placed in a container so that it would be protected in the nursery environment and be easy to carry home. Well, you want to make sure that you cut away all of the rope that is around these. And this is a, a plastic type twine. It's not going to decompose. Also make sure that you, after you cut all the twine away that you lower that burlap away from the root ball after, you, after you've eased it into the hole and roll it back about a third of the way down the root ball so that the roots have a chance to expand out into the surrounding soil. Well, I've got one back here that is ready for planting and I want to give you a couple of tips. Keep in mind that this is stock that we're buying in the fall. It's been in the nursery all season and it may possibly be root bound. And Brenda, if you can hand me that shovel, we can get this one planted. Again, this is uh, Euonymus aleta and this is the compacta form. Thanks. This is the compacta form, and even so, it's become a little bit of root bound in the nursery. And if you take a look at how the roots have circled around, you want to check for any large ones that have begun to circle and clip those. You can also take a knife or the blade of pruners and just score the side of it. And some people call this butterflying the root mass. And it's one way to loosen up those pots that have become pot bound. You can also cut across the bottom and this really is not horribly rough treatment. I want to keep in mind that in Oklahoma our soils are going to stay warm on into December and these roots are going to get a chance to fan out into the soil and proliferate and if you just leave them all pot bound they're going to continue to grow in a circle and they really will not expand out into the surrounding soil. Well we've got our soil all worked up here. This is where we had our tomatoes and it had plenty of organic matter worked into it early in the season. With nursery stock, such as the shrubs that we're planting today, the planting depth is not horribly critical. You just don't want to plant them too deeply because you can end up with a hole of soil that will retain water, especially if you're in a heavy clay like we are here in the studio gardens. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that, as I mentioned, if you have anything that's in the prunus genus, that's in the stone fruit family, make sure that you plant it slightly mounded so that it will have plenty of good drainage. And keep in mind, as, with all, as we mentioned before, with planting trees and container-grown stock, no need to buy special soil amendments. You can backfill with the surrounding soil. The key is to not walk on the area, leave it nice and loose and aerated, because roots grow out before they start growing down. We're going to fill this back in, and we've got a big job ahead of us to get the rest of this planted. But I want you to keep in mind that we're going to be referring back to this new theme garden from now until December of next year and each month we'll be featuring some kind of floral design that you can make from our new cut flower garden.